to you, God. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear it for Blake. Let us in uh, worship today. Thank you, Blake. It's great to see everybody. Glad you're here. T today we are uh, looking at uh, uh, Joshua. So if you want to turn, uh, find the book of Joshua. It's in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at uh, this man's life. This, of course, Joshua. Uh, We'll be looking at verses all in Joshua, in Deuteronomy, and Numbers, and, and all over the place. But um, uh, Joshua, is, uh, uh, you know, all these men we're looking at, and, uh, and we'll be looking at this whole semester, uh, uh, you know, they're just men. They're just, I guess, average Ordinary, uh, natural men. And they all had issues. All had struggles. Uh, Joshua had some struggles. He One, he's following a huge leader in Moses. And you know how hard it is to follow a legend. And that's his assignment. Of course, he's got a huge assignment in, 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 in the book of Joshua uh, uh, to lead the nation of Israel uh, who have been uh, who, uh, Moses led out of Egypt. Moses led through the wilderness, and, and to get there, and now it's, it's and, and he dies, and now it's Joshua's assignment to lead the nation of Israel uh, into the promised land, and the first seven chapters of Joshua are just, they, um, I've got to cross the River Jordan, which is a huge deal, almost as big, well, it actually is as big as, as when they crossed the Red Sea. It's just a huge deal to get into the promised land. And then in the promised land, there are enemies everywhere. And uh, they're going to fight in, in that process of uh, conquering the land of 31 enemies, 31 evil nations, 31 kings are, are going to be, and they're going to defeat them all. And, and, and beat them. you're going to cross the um, uh, River Jordan. And, and the message is, of course, any obstacle out there, our God is greater there are enemies everywhere, but our God is greater than all these enemies. And then, it, and then they're going to, uh, of course, fight a, a battle of Jericho in Judges chapter 6, which is a huge story, huge, uh, the walled uh, city and all of that. We'll, 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 but uh, uh, Joshua, all this stuff gets done, even though he struggled with things, as all of these men do. The point is this, man, it, 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 the story of all these of people in the Bible, it, it's what God can do in a man's life when a man decides, I'm going to believe God, I'm going to trust God, I'm stepping out by faith, and I'm going to uh, uh, allow him to do whatever he wants to do in my life. And he'll do it. Uh, that's, uh, so I'm, I'm praying all these men kind of inspire us and challenge us and remind us of things. And of course, uh, there are five great Great uh, things. We're going to uh, look at uh, Joshua and who he was. One, Joshua was faithful. Every area of his life, he was faithful. Everything he did, every, every season of his life, uh, he was faithful. He was uh, committed. He was consecrated. He was serious about uh, following God and trusting him. He was courageous. Joshua was a man of courage. We'll look at that. So fourth, he was obedient. He just did what God told him to do. He just did it. And then fifth, he was decisive. So Moses, uh, Joshua is going to be the one at, at the end of Joshua in chapter 24, verse uh, 15. He's going to say, he's going to say uh, as for me and my house, we've decided, we choose, and we're going to follow the Lord God. And that's what he is. Yeah. Let's look at this. 
these uh, five. Uh, first, let me just read uh, Joshua 1 all the way through verse 9, because this is, kind of sets up the whole thing. And uh, we'll look at these uh, five areas. Joshua 1, 1. After the death of Moses, the, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the uh, son of Nun, and then that little phrase, Moses' assistant, which is fascinating because that's a major area of his life. He was a servant of Moses. He was an assistant of Moses. He was beside Moses. And we'll look at that. Uh, Moses, my uh, servant, is dead. Past is, is done. You know what? God's men do pass on. But God's work continues. And yes, Moses was one of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest. But you know what? He's dead and gone. And, and now we move forward. And God's going to say, uh, Joshua, I'm going to be with you in this whole deal. And so he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, because of that, now, therefore, you arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land that I am giving uh, to them, to the people of Israel. And then he makes this credible statement. God says, every place that the sole of your foot will to tread upon, I have given to you. That's a promise. Just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness, and this uh, Lebanon, as uh, far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. This is an amazing statement. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, because our God is greater than any at all. And uh, this, just as I was with Moses, he tells Joshua, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. That's a huge statement in this whole thing. For him and for us men. Then he says this, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. He's going to say that a bunch of times. That said, uh, this little, uh, these phrases right here, or just said Deuteronomy, Moses tells Joshua that. God here is telling Joshua that. Uh, uh, just, just as a reminder... Now Joshua is going to tell his men who are serving under him this same statement. He says, be strong and courageous. You shall cause the people to inherit the land that I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. That's fascinating. He said that twice. Being careful to do all, according to all the law that Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right hand or the left. In order that you may have good success wherever you go, it's all based on the word of God he's going to say, and we'll look at this in a minute, and on the presence of our God with us and on his power to accomplish anything and everything through us. Verse uh, 7, uh, only be strong and courageous, very careful to do all, to do all that the law, the most of my servant commanded you, don't turn from the right hand or the left, in order that you have good success. This book of the law of Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. God's purposes are wrapped up in this Bible. God's promises are wrapped up in this Bible. God's precepts of, of who we are supposed to be and how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to do what God has, has called us and is leading us to do. All of that is in the Word of God, he says. So, I meditate on it day and night, according to all that is written in, for then you, will, uh, then you will make your way prosperous and you will have great success. Then he says again, verse 9, have I not commanded you? A third time he's saying this. You know, it just, it just may be Joshua was struggling with fear. Joshua was struggling, was feeling weak. He's not able. He's not capable, he's thinking. He's struggling with, hey, maybe I can't do that. Maybe I should quit. And so he says this, verse 9. Haven't I commanded you? Third time he's going to say stuff like this. Be strong, son, and courageous. Do not be frightened. And do not be dismayed. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's, that's the message. Well, uh, 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 first deal. In this first point, Joshua was faithful in every area of his life and everything he did. 
uh, uh, Joshua. He was a son at a time. He was a slave in Egypt at a time. He was a soldier who fought battles and led Israel in the war. And he was a servant. And he was a successor to Moses. And he did all of that extremely well. First, he was a son. It says specifically, in Numbers 13, it says it in Joshua 1, 1, 1, as, as well. He's a son of Nun. Nun was in, in the a tribe of Ephraim. We don't know anything about his mother, but we know just what well, we just assume. He was a good son. He was faithful. Obviously, he had good godly parents because he was raised loving, knowing the Lord God, loving the Lord God, believing in the Lord God, and the people of God, the nation of Israel. And he did all of that well. He did it as a son, he did it well. Too, as a slave. He was a slave in Egypt. He was born in Egypt when uh, the uh, uh, Israelites were slaves. And, and God spent mi- who he became, all that God did in his life, he accomplished and did because of the preparation God did in his heart, in his life, while he was a slave in Egypt. That's the point. God spent all, all those years preparing Joshua to be the man he created him to me and for the calling he had for him, everything he wanted him to do. And, and, and almost all of that was done when he was a slave in Egypt. And obviously, his mom and dad gave him a strong witness, strong teaching about God's promise of redemption for his people. He saw the work of Moses. Listen to this. He saw and observed, and because he started as a, um, uh, an assistant to Moses, as a, a young man, and he was actually there, and this is, how fascinating. He, he's actually there when uh, Moses, um, uh, well, I'm not there yet. But he saw all the work of Moses, all those plagues. He was there. He saw that. All those uh, miracles that, that happened against Pharaoh. And Joshua was the first oldest, eldest son of Nun. So you know what that means on the night of Passover. When the death angel came over Egypt and every firstborn of every man, of every animal died as a result of the judgment of God, and only those lived had the blood on their doorstep. Joshua is a son who could have died in that thing because he was a firstborn son, except he was in a house that believed in God, believed, and, and there was blood on their door, and he lived through that. His faith in the Lord... And he was protected by the Lamb, Exodus 11 and 12. Joshua saw all these mighty works, all these signs. He knew because he had seen that. Even as a slave, he knew that God was the God of power. And he, God cared for his people. He had seen how God had humiliated all the gods of Egypt, had, had humiliated even Pharaoh, and he had demonstrated, yes, he is the one true God. He saw all of that. And, you know, he saw the whole Red Sea experience. He was there when all that stuff happened in the Red Sea, how it, how it, 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 it opened up. Nation of Israel goes through. Uh, 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 the army of the Egyptians is, is, is following them. It closes. It, it he saw all of that. Joseph was a man of faith, and, and he knew and trusted God because he knew his God was greater. He's going to do wonders for his people, and he's going to provide for his people. And, and bless his people. He saw all of that as a slave. Uh, you know, uh, one of the insights of that is, is men. Just be faithful right where you are, wherever you are. Even if you're a slave, just be faithful in that because God is doing something greater in you, for you, and ultimately it's going to be through you for even greater things. You know, a, greater, uh, a great example of this also is the life of Joseph in, in, in Genesis 37 through 50, who had a Stressed in his life where he was a slave. And yet God had blessed him that and prepared him for greater things. He's, he's a faithful. Joshua is as a son, as a slave, and as a soldier. First recorded act of uh, 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 Joshua in the Bible is Exodus 17, 8 uh, through 16, when the nation of Israel is, is uh, exiting out of the uh, land of Egypt. And after two months, after leaving Egypt, they have a battle against the Amalekites. And, and, and Joshua is the commanding officer on behalf of, of Moses and this and the Lord. And he 
led them to a great defeat of the Amalekites. Uh, Moses was always a prophet and an a, uh, administrator. Joshua was a general and a soldier, a man of great courage, not afraid to confront the enemy at any time, whoever they were, and trust the Lord for victory. He did that well. Now, the, the point is, where did Joshua learn all these things about being a soldier, about being a, a general, and about, about all that stuff? Well, you might, you, you might just deduce, well, he learned it somehow in Egypt as a slave. God prepared them, maybe from the uh, Egyptian army, but, but the, the fact is, he did all of this well, and in one sense, maybe this battle with the Amalekites in, in Exodus 17 was just a test. God had for him to be faithful here because he had greater things planned for him in the promised land to defeat 30 other nations and 30 kings and 30 other armies, and he was faithful here as well. Somebody made this statement. Men, make everything you do, every occasion, every day, a great occasion. You know why? You can never tell who, uh, someone who might be taking measure of you and who you are for a greater assignment. That's the point. And ultimately, we want to be faithful in any assignment now, whatever it is, but because it honors God. And we know our God is doing something. He's faithful as a soldier, and he's faithful as a servant to Moses, an assistant. Joshua 1 1 calls him assistant. Exodus 24 13 calls him assistant. And he was right beside Moses. You know, when Moses in Exodus 24 went up on the mountain, the uh, second um, time to get the uh, Ten Commandments after, after all that stuff happened in the, in the calf, he broke it. He goes the second time. You know who was there? Right? Uh, Exodus 20, um, yeah, 24 13 just, just says, uh, Joshua is right there. He walked up half of the mountain with him, and then Moses tells him to stay. He's going, he was right there when all that, uh, he saw the fire and the smoke and the thunder and lightning on the mountain around, just revealing the, uh, the uh, presence of God. Uh, Joshua was there. He saw that, and uh, that's Exodus 24, and Exodus 33, 11, and this is awesome. Uh, Moses, after that, he sets up a tent of meeting outside of the camp of, of the uh, nation of Israel. And it's where he met with God. And he would go outside, and the Bible says, uh, he would go outside the camp uh, 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 in this tent of meeting. And when Moses was in the tent meeting with God, it said every household in the whole nation of Israel would, would stop and go outside and, and just would stand and, and look at that. It was so awesome. Joshua was there around and in that tent, and it says 30, uh, Exodus 33, 11. Uh, 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 I think this is where it, it, it no, it's not 33, 11. It's, uh, no, that's Numbers. I mean, Numbers 30. Yes, it is. It is uh, Exodus 30, listen, 33, 11 of, of, of uh, Exodus. That's the Lord. Uh, Moses is in the tent. He said, that's the Lord he used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And when Moses turned again in the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. He didn't want to leave because how awesome it was to be in the presence of God. My point is this. Joshua is experiencing all of this incredible stuff, and he, 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 God is doing something here, but he's being faithful as a son, as a slave, as a... Uh, a soldier, as a servant of Moses, and as a spy. Because you remember, uh, Moses, when they uh, were looking for the land, the promised land, wanted to, to check it out, I sent 12 spies over there, and, and, and 10 came back and said, hey, we can't go there. There are giants in the land. There's so many enemies. They're, they're, they're greater than we are. They're bigger than we are. They got everything. We can't do it. And two of them, Numbers 14, two of them said, uh, Joshua and, and, and Caleb, in fact, in Numbers 14, 1 through 4, all the nation is in despair because they can't do this. Even Moses and Aaron, it says in verse 5, fall on their face because of this report. We can't do this. But then two men stand up, or uh, speak out one, uh, Joshua speaks out, and essentially in verse 6, he says all this. And, 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 and he said, hey, 
the land which we have passed through as spy out, it's a good land. And if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us in this land, give it to the land, and the Lord will be with us. Verse 9, he says, do not fear them or anyone. The point is, everyone else said no. Joshua said yes. He's learning to trust in his God. Faithfully, he, he, he serves uh, Moses. He's, he, he's, he's faithful as a spy and as a successor. Uh, he's just faithful, leading the nation of Israel as well, crossing over the Jordan, defeating all the enemies. And, and ultimately, he, he's leading them, and he's, he's inspiring us to realize victory man comes through faith in our God and trusting him and just obedience to his word rather than the size of the enemy. Doesn't matter the size of the enemy. Doesn't matter what's on the other side. What matters is who's in us. And God in us is enough. It's sufficient. He's faithful in every area of our life. Men, the challenge, one challenge is for all of us. Men, just be faithful right where you are. Do whatever God, just, just trust our God because God is greater. He can as well. First thing, he's faithful. Second thing, he's, he's committed to his God. Just, Joshua was committed. Numbers 32, 11 through 12 just gives an example of this, that uh, uh, God is speaking here, Numbers 32, 11 and 12, and, and it says this, 11, God's saying this, it says, hey, surely none of the men who, who came up out of Egypt from 20 years and upward and older uh, shall see the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is because they have not wholly followed me. They've not been committed They've been a double edge, just, just one side, the other side, but did not wholly follow me, he says, except, verse 12 says, none except Caleb and Joshua, because they have wholly uh, followed the Lord. It's just totally surrendered, completely sold out, just following God, just trusting God, just believing in God, just obeying his word, just doing whatever God says, doing, just saying, I am going to follow. It's what the Bible says about the disciples. Uh, you follow Jesus. It, 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 that little phrase in the New Testament, it says a couple of times, hey, they forsook everything and they followed the Lord. They just trusted. It's what Jesus tells us. Hey, any man wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. It's what Dietrich Bonhoeffer is famous for saying, hey, the call to the disciples is a call to come and die. To just lose yourself in following Jesus. And... What the Bible says, when we lose ourselves in following Jesus, we find ourselves and we experience life in all its fullness now and life everlasting with him. He just trusted God. It's what, it's what the Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, a great verse, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support. God is looking for a man he can give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him, to those who are sold out to him. Joshua was committed. No doubt. He decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I'm going after Christ. You know what? My life changed. You know, the world hears that and thinks, God, uh, why would you want to do that? I, who have done that, my answer is, why wouldn't you want to do that? Man, it changed my life. And it changed my future. Uh, because I know where I'm going. I know who's in me. I'm trusting him. He, he, was, he, he was committed. And then third, he was courageous. Uh, Joshua was courageous. Now, how, how can we be strong and uh, courageous? Well, the Bible says, basically, hey, we got the word of God, what God says. Joshua had what God had told him, what God had told Moses to tell him, and what the Spirit of God told him. He had the word of God, and in the word of God, or the purposes of God. God has a plan. A purpose always does. He's always working something in us, for us, and through us. He's always uh, uh, using us to accomplish his plan for uh, those around us and for all of history. He, he just, the, the purposes of God, the promises of God, and the precepts of God. And, and, and essentially, this is in the word of God. We can be strong and courageous because we have the word of God. And... and uh, uh, he says about that, Joshua 1 8, that, um, that he just reminds us that, hey, um, this book of the law shall not depart 
Now from your mouth we shall meditate on it day and night, that, that you may be careful to do all that is written therein. He basically he says, hey, this word of God, hey, just think about it, men. Read it. Uh, talk about it, he says, first of all. Uh, talk about this thing. It's what he says in, in Deuteronomy 6 and 7 about, hey, talk with this about your children. When you rise up, when you live, when you lay down, just talk about this word of God, he says. And then he says, think about the word of God. It's, it's, it's what Psalms 119 says as well. 119, uh, 97 says, oh, how I love your law. It's my uh, meditation all the day. We think about it. It's what Psalms uh, 1, 2 says. Hey, his delight Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scholars, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, in his law, he meditates day and night. He, he just thinks about it. And he lives it. Deuteronomy 30, verse 14. He says this. And this is, I'm not sure I've ever even noticed this a verse before, but this is glorious. 30, 14, he says this. That um, 30, 14. But the word, he says, is very near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. So that you can do it. You can live this thing and, and experience it. We, it's the word of God. And it's the presence of God. Man, he says over and over again, I will be with you. It's what um, uh, Joshua 1, 5 and 9 says, I'm going to be with you. It's what Exodus 33, 14 says, I will be with you. It's what Jesus says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. We can rejoice. We can be strong and courageous because the fact is our God is with us. And God in us is the hope of glory is what he says. That's the presence of God. And it's the power of God. God says, Joshua 1, 1, uh, 2 through 5. He just, he, he, he makes this great statement, my servant, you go over, because to the people, every place the soul of feet, I will give you, this whole thing is yours. From verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. God is greater than. God told Moses, you will bring the nation of Israel out of Egypt. God told Joshua, you will lead them into the promised land and every obstacle uh, you will be successful through, and every enemy you will uh, defeat. That's the bottom line. He was courageous. He went on. Man, that's a word every one of us needs to hear every day of our life because we face things every day which are bigger than we are. You know, we, we have prayed, and I'm so grateful for you guys are praying for us and Sheila and her cancer and everything. You know, in one sense, a giant showed up in our family. The giant of cancer. Cancer is huge. It's great. It's a giant, and it just walked into our life. But praise God, our God is greater than cancer. Greater than anything and everything, every obstacle, every enemy, anything and everything. That's the message of Joshua. And just, he is with us. We don't have to fear. God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound um, mind, the uh, Bible says. He was courageous. That tells me if I heard anything, and this message today is Neil Jeffrey, because of what you got in Jesus Christ and who is in you, who's called you, who's commissioned you, what your assignment is, we got nothing to fear in this whole thing. You know what? We're going to courageously go on. And Tuesday morning when we walk into the hospital and we're going to have surgery, hey, in one sense, it don't matter what happens. And Sheila and I have already had discussions. If this is the end, if he takes you to be with Jesus, if you don't make it, whatever happens, we're going to praise the Lord God because we know it's his plan. And we can trust him in the midst of that, but God is greater. That's the point. And then fourth, real quick, Joshua was obedient. He did what God told him to do, whatever it was. And sometimes God gave him the most, what seemed, humanly speaking, it seemed to be the most stupid thing to do. But Joshua said, I'm going to do it. For example, when they fought the Amalekites, Joshua was leading the army. And Moses is up on the mountain. 
and Aaron and Hur are beside him. And for some reason, when Moses held his hands up, the army prevailed and was winning. But as soon as his hands go down, all of a sudden, a tide turns. Because Moses is interceding, he gets tired. So Aaron and her take his arm and hold him up. And they win the battle. Now you could say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. So what a fool says, a fool who says there is no God, a fool says, hey, I'm not going to stand up here with him. I'm not going to hold his arm. I'm not going to do this thing. Hey, you can't explain that. And the reason you can't explain that is you can't explain God. God says, do it this way, and you're going to be successful. Uh, uh, Moses, Aaron, um, uh, Hur, Joshua, they just believed God. Battle of Jericho, Joshua chapter 6. Now, how stupid is this? Hey, here's how you're going to beat them. You're going to walk around, the whole army, everybody's going to walk around the, the, the walled city uh, six days, one time, everybody's going, with seven priests blowing these horns. What? And then on the seventh day, you're going to walk around seven times. And on the seventh time, as soon as you're done, everyone's going to, horns are going to blow and everyone's going to shout and the walls are coming down. That's the stupidest thing in the history of the world. But God said it. Joseph believed it. He obeyed. And it was done. You know, it's just uh, crossing the Jordan. Hey, how about when he crossed the Jordan? Well, he, he, he tells uh, Joshua... Hey, Joshua, I take the ark and the priests around the ark. And as soon as the priest, now, the, uh, at this time of the year, scholars say, the Jordan is, is, is it, uh, it's the rainy season and it just, it, it, it's, it's, it's like the Colorado River. I mean, it, it's just a rushing thing. It's over its bank. It's all over the place. But as soon as the priests with the ark actually step in the, River Jordan, and they're standing there. As soon as they do that, the uh, flow of the river is going to stop. Now, scientists, ABC News, everyone say, hey, that's the stupidest thing in the world. But you know what? That doesn't happen. The miracle doesn't happen. Someone's got to believe and obey and says, hey, I'm stepping in this thing. And and when they step, it stops, and the whole nation goes across through the River Jordan. Men. There are a thousand things like that in the Bible that God says, and, 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 and I don't have time to really look at these, but just, you know, just the whole idea of sex. world says, hey, the Bible's way to do sex is stupid, it's outdated, there's no way. But in our world, men are having more sex and they're more miserable than they've ever been. Just do it God's way. How you handle money? Money, just do it God's way. Hey, how do you handle a situation? Just do it God's way. Hey, how do you love your wife unconditionally with Christ all the church? Just do it God's way. Just obey the Lord. Joshua obeyed God, and, 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 and God did great things. Great faith, great, great things happens when a man has faith in a great God. He wants to do great things through that man if the man will only just believe. It's about belief. And then last, they, uh, he was decisive. Look, in conclusion, look at uh, Joshua 24, verse 14. Here's the end of this thing. He says this. Now, therefore, after all this stuff, be strong, be courageous. Do not be, uh, be afraid. He says, now, therefore, fear the Lord. That's the first. Be strong and courageous. Hey, you have respect for the Lord. He he says in, in Joshua 1, 9, hey, be strong, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. God spoke this word. It may have meant that the man he's speaking to felt weak. Don't we all at one time speak where he says, hey, you be strong. Be not afraid, he says. He spoke this to a man who was frightened, who needed to be reminded. And we don't have to be afraid of everything. Don't be afraid. And do not be dismayed. This man God has spoken to just may, may have things of just... Quitting. The fact is, when a man, God's man, feels like, like that, God shows up and reminds us who he is, who he is in us. God gives power to the faint, might to those who have no strength. 
He perfects his strengths in our weakness. He uses the things in this world that are not to bring to nothing those things that are. The point is, if Paul had been eloquent of speech and he was not, he may have, if he didn't have that, he may have never become the great apostle he was. The same thing with Moses. He stuttered. If he hadn't had that, he may never become the, the uh, his point is, we fear our God who's greater. Two, he says, he's, he said, hey, serve the Lord. Do something, men. Serve the Lord God. Serve your wife. Serve your family. Serve the church. Serve, just, just make a play. Just be involved in stuff. Just do things. Uh, witness, give, all of that. I can do all things, Paul says, through Christ being strengthened me. Uh, strengthen me. Uh, strengthens me. Uh, he says third. Uh, right there he says, serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. And put away the gods of your fathers, all those um, who served beyond the river in Egypt. Serve the Lord, he says. We could say a whole lot about that, but just, uh, just, just walk away from sin, all that stuff. And then at the end, he says this. Um, if it's evil, in, in verse 15, in, in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom we will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region before the river or the gods of the Amorites who land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then he says, we will also serve, verse 18, the Lord, for he is our God. He makes a decisive decision. As for me and my house, we will serve God. That's a man. That's God's man. That's here I want to be. That's how I want to live. Well, I'm just three minutes over which is a miracle. <laughs> so we have two. Um, you know, I think I always I prepare too much and always feel like, and, and, and i got to change this, but just, I'm just rushing to get through it. And I've got all this stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, and i got all these notes and things and that I feel like the Lord's uh, given me, but, you know, it's just... Uh, Anyway, we're going to spend some time talking around our, our tables. Two questions, and, and uh, you can answer anything at your table, talk about anything, but maybe just what characteristics, characteristic of Joshua, these five things, speaks most powerfully to you. Share that or share some stuff. Two, what's the one thing God said to you this morning? What was the it that you needed to hear this morning, this kind of talk, discuss, share, pray together? However, God to lead you in these uh, moments. So, uh, spend some time around your table and just to talk. And at the end, I'll close this up uh, in prayer at the end.
All right, let me close it up. Um, if, uh, you know, I was thinking, just, just standing over there, uh, you know, Moses and, and all these guys, they're great stories. I mean, uh, uh, books have been written about them, about Moses, about Joshua and, and their life. And, and, uh, and uh, movies have been made. Great stories, just, um, but I was thinking, uh, what's our story? Now, what's the story about you? The miracle is what God did in these men's lives, and then what God did through these lives. There's something there, visible, tangible, to tell the story about, to, uh, 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 the song, Joshua Fought the battle of Jericho. Songs were written about them. Now, here's the point, men. Is there any, is God doing anything in my life that the end result, hey, there's a great story there? Because there should be. Now, you can make a movie out of this. I mean, Charlton Heston was Moses. Man, who would play me? Who, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Man, that's the point. You know, it may be a good evidence of the story of your life of faith at your funeral. And I do a bunch of them. And I'm always so blessed when a godly man, great family, and his grandkids stand up. And uh, there's no Jericho experience in his life. Uh, there's no, you know, tink all that stuff. But they stand up and just give testimony to the faithful of that man's life and how how much he loved Jesus, how much he loved his wife, how he cared for her, how much he loved them. I mean, that's the story. That's how we want to live, man. That's how we want to do it. Well, let's pray. We're going to get on your knees. God, the story is that there's a great God. He wants to do great things in the life of an average man like me like us. And of course, we think well, you've blessed us with so much and, and we have far more than we even realize we have. And we are more than we actually are. And of course, the world beats us down and people beat us down. And the friends beat us down and we see what's on TikTok and, and uh, all, text, all of that stuff and we feel so insignificant and insecure and so nothing. That's a lie. Who we are in Christ is enough. Because our God is enough. And you know what? Things are good in my life. You know why? Because God is good. And God's good all the time. And what's, it don't matter what's happening around me and even to me because my God is in me. And God, because of that, I can just... Uh, have the story of faith in me, and then live it through whatever the circumstances of life may be, good, bad, or ugly. It doesn't matter. That's the story of a man who believed in his God. God, I want to be that man. I pray we would be that man, and we would live in such a way that the end result is going to be a story of our faith that needs to be told and, and shared. It's what Revelation 14. 13 says that those who die in the Lord, they, they're going to rest uh, from their deeds, uh, uh, rest in heaven, but their deeds are going to follow them because there's a story there. God, I want there to be a story about my life. I got to pray for these men. And God, if there's a man here who has never even begun his story of faith, I pray today would be the day he'll choose, he'll make a decisive decision to confess his sin, to confess Jesus as the Savior, the Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world, who will take my sins away if I confess, and he'll ask Jesus Christ in his heart and life. And today will be, will be his decisive moment of salvation, which will change everything in his life today and in his future. God, for most of us who believe in Jesus, we've trusted Jesus, God help us to live it. And, 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 and to live in such a way that it shows, it's obvious. God, we don't have to be arrogant. We don't have to be obnoxious. We just be real. Hey, laugh at Jesus all you want, but he changed my life. 
And I'm a new man. I'm a new a creation because of Jesus and what he did for me, what he's doing for me, and who he is in me and who he is through me. And God, help us to honor you today in all that we do. God, I pray for this weekend, the preaching of your gospel here in this place and places like this all around Texas, the nation, the world. May Jesus be lifted up this weekend. And may you draw, God, just thousands, millions to you this weekend as a result of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, help us to be faithful in all that we do. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Have a great weekend. See you next week.